Hello, everyone. Welcome to Amago Season 1, Episode 50, Accessing the Peace of God. I'm your host, Vanessa Brown. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Accessing the peace of God. So it's November and the holiday season is upon us now. And while it is a time of the year where we are together with families and friends and we celebrate and we have a good time, it's also the time of year where many people feel lonely, disillusioned, and are filled with grief. This really should not be the case for believers. But because we have not really done a great job of building people up and preparing people for tough situations in life, many people are vulnerable to feeling this way. The enemy finds points of entry through illness, through grief, and past traumas. Tonight, I want to teach about accessing the peace of God that so many are desperately seeking. I wanted to talk about this topic now before the holidays comes, holidays come, hoping that it will fortify some people who may be having these, I want to call them triggers or um, emotions during the holidays. Let's begin by looking at Philippians chapter four, verse four. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. The first thing that I would say helps us in accessing the peace of God is delighting in God's grace. Joy is a state of great happiness that's caused by something or someone exceptionally good or satisfying. For those of us who are believers, our joy does not come from anything that the world has to offer. As a child of God, our joy comes from our salvation. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2 says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Salvation has several meanings for the believer. It means help, deliverance, prosperity, security, and victory. The salvation of the Lord is what causes us to have joy. Knowing that God does not treat us as we deserve, but that he continuously shows up for us time after time, to deliver us from evil, knowing that God fights on our behalf, knowing that he is our protector and that he is our way maker. To rejoice is to delight in God's grace. It means to take great pleasure in it. It is not something that we take for granted, but his grace means a sense or a state of happiness that is not removed from us based on our changing conditions of life. My salvation is God and he does not change. Because he is my salvation, he is always worthy of praise. Philippians 4 and 2 tells us to rejoice. This means be conscious to be glad for his grace. Delighting in the salvation of the Lord, delighting in his help, delighting in his deliverance, delighting in his prosperity, his security, and his victory. All of these are our salvation. It's ours because of God's grace. It is ours because of his favor towards us. And delighting in his salvation allows us access to his peace. It causes us or it should cause us to rejoice because we would not 
have the ability, right, to even have eternal life without God's salvation. God provided salvation for us. And so we should continually rejoice and delight in that and be consciously aware of it. So point number one is delighting in the salvation of the Lord gives us access to his peace. The second thing that I want to talk about is letting our gentleness be evident to all. This provides us access to peace. As children of God, we are called to practice gentleness. Now, gentleness is not some false act of being a mild-mannered person, nor does it mean being a doormat for people to walk on. Gentleness is the characteristic of being a person who is fair, a person who seeks to help the spirit well, who seeks to carry out the spirit of the law rather than trying to make others practice and making sure every I is dotted or T is crossed or providing rules that people can't live up to. Gentleness is extending the same grace that God has given you to those who need it the most. And you're doing this You're extending this gentleness in order to win them to Christ. Gentleness is representing Christ. Notice that practicing gentleness has an impact on you as well as an impact on others. Practicing gentleness allows you the capacity to be able to access the peace of God for yourself. So you're practicing being gentle to someone else, right? So you're providing them with some sense of peace. But when you are practicing gentleness, it also allows you the access to the peace of God. So your gentleness should be evident by everyone who meets you who knows you, they should speak of your character as you being a gentle person. It provides you access to God's peace when you are a person who is gentle in nature. Now, the opposite of being a gentle person (laughs) is being a person who is very abrasive, right? You're abrasive in your conversation. You're abrasive in your conduct. And when something is abrasive, it it rubs against the grain. It's, It's uncomfortable. So if you are a person who makes other people uncomfortable, then you are not practicing gentleness. And it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. If people do not feel at peace around you, then you're not practicing gentleness. And if you are an abrasive person, It will be difficult for you to access the peace of God because God's character is not abrasive and that is not his expectation for us. So when you are practicing gentleness and it is evident by everyone around you, then you have access to the peace of God for yourself. The third point that I want to make is that In order to access the peace of God, you should not be anxious about anything. And I know that there's a lot of talk about anxiety, and I get it. It is real for some people. But anxiety is also a decision. Philippians 4 and 5, it ends with this statement, the Lord is near. And at first I thought, hmm. It's almost as if this statement doesn't make sense being there. But actually, the end part of verse five is an introduction for verse six. And verse six talks about not being anxious. The Greek word for anxious is marina. It means apart drawn in opposite directions, 
divided into parts and to go to pieces. Now think about that for a second. I'm going to say it again. The Greek word for anxious is marina. It means a part drawn in opposite directions, divided into parts, or to go to pieces. Now, if the end of the previous verse just told us that God is near and you are anxious, you are going in the opposite direction from God. You are falling apart from him. If God is near, as a believer, the word of God says that you should cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. The spirit of anxiety wants you to fall to pieces. That's what it means. It wants you to fall to pieces. But God wants you to be conscious and sober in your mind. The word of God says, with prayers and petitions, with thanksgiving, we are to make our request known to God. When you are praying and petitioning with thanksgiving, it's worship, right? And so doing these things allows you access to the peace of God. The peace of God protects our hearts and our minds. And we know, again, that the heart is the inner being of man, right? Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. The peace of God comes from God. It is peace with him. It is peace with God. Therefore, we rejoice that we are in a relationship with him and all that he is to us is our salvation. God is our salvation. The peace of God within us makes us gentle and we are able to be gentle toward others because it's no longer me, but it is Christ that lives in me, right? That makes me have the ability to be gen gen uh, gentle. The peace of God within me means I no longer have to fight with my brothers or sisters or even a non-believer because it is with loving kindness that I draw them to Christ. Finally, peace with God means I have no need to be anxious because I am one with him. I have the access to ask God whatever I will in his name. I believe and I shall receive it. The peace of God is not removed by any changing scenarios, circumstances, or situations in my life. See, the peace of God is like a, mm, what do we call them? A centurion, a military god, guard that's on his post. And as conflicts arises, the guard becomes even more diligent in protecting my heart and my mind. The peace of God transcends all understanding. The peace of God does what I can't do, and that is to protect my heart and my mind. It has control of my soul. It protects what goes in as well as what comes out. So I pray that you receive the peace of God. I pray that you rejoice in the Lord always. That is, I pray that you remember that God is to you, your help, your savior. He is the one that delivers. He is the one that protects. He is the one that provides. He is the one that satisfies. This is what you are to rejoice in. This is what you are to be consciously aware of that God is your salvation. 
and rejoice in that over and over. Think about all of the times that he has been your help. Think about all the time that he has delivered you. Think about all the time he has protected you, all the time that he has provided for you, all the time that he has satisfied you, and then constantly rejoice in that over and over. Rejoice. So even if things are sad today, you rejoice in the God of your salvation. Be consciously aware of it. Secondly, I pray that you let the gentleness, your gentleness, be evident to everyone that you encounter. I pray that you will not judge people based on your judgment, but that you be as gentle to others as Christ has been gentle to you. And then finally, I pray that you would not be anxious for anything. Because being anxious pushes you away from God instead of you casting all of your cares on him. Through prayers and petitions with thanksgiving, make all of your requests known unto God. I want to leave you this evening with a few verses from Isaiah chapter 12. It says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. And he also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the springs of salvation. And on that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name, make known his works, his works known among the peoples. Declare that his name is exalted. Thank you for joining me this week. Please make sure that you download the Omega podcast on Spotify if it is available. If not, the Omega podcast is available on all media platforms. If you're on Spotify, you can check out the notes section. There is a link that will allow you to support the podcast by subscribing. Don't forget, I am on YouTube now, and you can find me with the at sign, Amago Him, I-M-A-G-O-H-I-M. You can find a few of my videos on the Amago channel. Please also subscribe to the page, like it, and hit that notify button. You can visit my website at omegohem.com to check out my coaching services, leadership development services. I'm available for Bible studies. I'm available for leadership uh, seminars. So check it out and let me know. You can also find me on Instagram at the Omega sign at Omega Him or join me on Facebook by typing I M A G O. Be sure to like and share my weekly reels and post on Facebook. And please email me any comments or suggestions that you may have. I can be found at omegohim at gmail.com. I'll see you next week. And until then, we shall be just like him. Mm-hmm.